if you had to attribute, I mean, because like your business has probably tripled in the last couple years, mm-hmm. right? Like yes. there's this steady, slow climb for more than a decade. Mm-hmm. And then something clicked where the last couple years, you've just absolutely exploded. What changed? Welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast, live every Tuesday, 8 a.m. Central Center Time. Today, I got a special guest, a repeat guest on the Power Player Podcast, because she is the ultimate power player, crushing it, growing, scaling, and helping a ton of people, known as a healthcare lady, all the way from Tupelo, Mississippi. Please welcome back, Leticia Jackson. Good morning, Cody. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing awesome. What about yourself? I am fantastic. I'm hanging out talking to you. If, if, if for those that don't know Leticia, maybe you missed the first episode. You definitely got to go back and listen to it because I'm telling you, she drops gold. She made six figures very quickly, organically, with no leads. She's built a business that is, I would guess, is probably going to do seven figures this year. If I'm, you know, right? Right. Yeah. How does right. that? How does that feel to say, by the way? Because I know, I know you're a very humble individual. Mm-hmm. You're not arrogant in any way. <laughs> your 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 husband Darnell's a pastor. Y'all run a church in Tupelo, Mississippi. Like you're really right. good, good people. Right. How does that feel to say? It really feels unbelievable because I just remember where I come from and where I get started when I got started in the business yeah and to say that seven figures is on its way I, I still can't believe it I just I just can't believe it you know uh, it's a very humbling experience it really is Cody yeah yeah you know it's I, cool. I start, trying to accept the fact I guess it's still yeah new to me yeah it's been a wild journey too um I'm sure you know I mean how, how long you been doing this so, you know what? I have all my numbers mixed up. I was stuck on 14 years. Darnell, he said, baby, it's been longer than that. So it's been 16 years all, all wow. together in the insurance industry. And I was like, you know what? You're right. That's <laughs> so, awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, you just did your first uh, little six-figure masterclass down in Tupelo. I did. How was that? It was amazing. It looked really cool, by the way. It, it was amazing. You know, it, it was a small group of people, which is what I wanted. And uh, it was a very intimate setting. It was more like using a classroom setting where you can stop, ask questions about your own personal business. And yeah. it just blew my mind. It did. Yeah. 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 It's cool that you're giving back. You're doing some special stuff. If you had to attribute, I mean, because like your business has probably tripled in the last couple years mm-hmm. right like yes. there's this steady slow climb for more than a decade mm-hmm. and then something clicked so where the last couple years you've just absolutely exploded what changed you know what um it already goes back to when the pandemic hit you know covid hit and we could not go out into the field and market and mm. so I realized I had to pivot real quickly to work on telesales, you know, work more on the phone. Yep. And so I put a lot of energy into that, a lot of promotion. Uh, also, too, during the pandemic, I had to hire people. <laughs> I had to hire people. Yes. And, yeah, I did. You know, I, I was unsure, but we hired more people. And by hiring more people, we could handle uh, more sales, more strategies, getting their ideas. And we just took off from there. Um yeah, it's it's funny how um, the people that hired. This will be a different conversation today. More of like just Letitia and I hanging out. Mm-hmm. We've hung out a bunch. She's really cool. She's spoken in Atlanta and Denver, and she's gonna be main stage, eight percent speaker, <laughs> along with Jesse Itzler, Tim Tebow, and Ed Milet this year, which is super exciting. Yes. You may see her as like a cool little fun surprise on the opening day of eight percent. I may slide that out there. We'll see. Right. Okay. It's asterisk subject to change, but I know she's going to crush it. She's got amazing energy, but it's cool. Like most of the people that have exploded their business, because I would say that um, since COVID, the CA brand has also just from a revenue standpoint is more than tripled, you know, mm-hmm. um, in the last couple of years. Um, and I attribute a lot of it as well, like you just said, to not only pivoting, 
because you know successful people pivot no matter what happens in their life right but also hiring a bunch of great people um it's interesting i have this new talk that i'm doing around the country called um eight business beliefs okay. and it's a newer talk that i haven't done on road shows and I may drop it at 8%. And it's it's a fun talk because it talks about how you should never hire average and how people, like an organization's growth potential is directly related to its personnel potential. Right. And most people don't realize that. Like we're not raised like that. It's it's almost weird because you think of people as an expense instead of an investment. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting. <laughs> the more people I have on my team, the larger the revenue grows. That's it's, true. It's so backwards. Right? Talk about that. So, you know what? So that's one of the biggest thing most people are afraid of hiring and when to hire. Yeah. But the thing is, by you hiring people, now you're putting them in, in places to where you can let go of some things that you're handling in your business. You can focus more on your business versus in the business. Mm. And so and bringing new people with great ideas who tell you things that you never even thought about, you know, because yeah. everyone has their own point of view and you bring to the table when you talk you discuss what may be the best scenario best situation of course we don't always know but we want to try different things to see what can help you grow so here we're more of a team versus hey you're my employee yeah 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 Mm -hmm. what what, what's some of the um what's some of the positions that you've hired that you've delegated to where maybe some roles that you used to do that you're no longer doing today (laughs) first role administration (laughs) okay Administration, you know, trying to um, call the client, CRM systems, um, paperwork, folders, you know, all that good stuff. We do phone calls. Administration was very, very important. And then once I did administrations, I hired a couple of people to help me with the uh, the health insurance market. Um, mm. Whether we're gathering information, calling them back, help with the enrollments. Um, help with marketing strategy. So they do a little bit of, little bit of some of everything. Um, but right now we have an admin now and we have actually three LOAs in the office right now as well. So they've gotten licensed and they to assist with these sales process as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's uh, how many people on the team now? 14. Gosh, God, I freaking <laughs> love that. 14 people 14. now. Mm-hmm. How many did you have um, March of 2020? March 2020, six. Wow. From six to 14 people. Mm -hmm. I love that too, because a lot of people were laying people off during COVID. They were, um, they were just firing people. They weren't hiring. They were like trimming back. They were cutting expenses. And here you, here you are doubling down and tripling down. And also too, we have the ability to help a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And to bring people into our world and bring them up and help them and help them make more money and 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 impact their lives. Like we always think about impacting consumers' lives. Most people mm-hmm. don't think about how we can impact team members' lives. You hit it on the head, Cody, because that was my thing. I wanted to say the people we brought on, I wanted to make it where they have experienced a different environment. So yeah. we can pour into them positively, but also to help them financially to be able to make income that they have maybe even thought about making. And yeah. so just to hear the people here, how they're so excited to come to work. They feel good here, got a great environment, but they're also making a decent income. It just makes me feel really good inside knowing we can give back in that yeah. way. And because we're able to give back to our team members, they give back to our clients. So, yes, yes. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. It's yeah. fun. Um, it's interesting. Well, I did have a random um, question that's probably a okay. little bit of a curveball. Okay. okay. Oh boy. <laughs> and I've never I've never asked anybody this on the podcast, but I felt like you were the right person to ask. Okay. Okay. Um, y'all pastor a church. What well, What's the name of the uh, church again? New Life Apostolic Church. New Life Apostolic Church in Tupelo. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's kind of normal in in, in just in the faith realm the Christian walk, et cetera, Mm -hmm. that someone it's almost, it's almost like frowned on in a way to like make a bunch of money and be a millionaire, but also be a Christian. Um, I don't think it should be right. But what's your opinion on that? Have you felt that before as you're kind of becoming this Christian millionaire that has the potential to help a ton (laughs) of people? It's probably like a weird feeling. 
because I know I wasn't necessarily raised that way, but growing right. up in church my whole life, my grandfather was a Baptist pastor for 40 something years. Like, right. you know what I mean? So I always kind of felt that a little bit. What's your, what's your opinion on all that? That random crazy curveball. Well, you know what, Cody? I'm actually going through that process or that thought right now as we yeah. speak, because this is unusual, but it shouldn't be unusual because yeah. we're taught to be humble and, you know, when you help yes. people and, and, and you, I hate to say it this way, but we're like in a box in a sense. Mm, yeah. Uh, when we come down to ministry. And so, but I'm always a dreamer and I always wanted more. And I felt like God can give it to you. So why do mm. we limit ourselves to what the people think you should be at in life? Right. Yeah. And so if we're going to be true leaders, you have to lead by example. So why can I not be successful in business? Why cannot I go speak on stages and inspire other people? Because the church is not just in the walls. It's outside the walls as well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like God can give you a bigger platform to touch so many other people's lives, whether it's spiritually, financially, whatever you can pour back into them. And so I had to learn to accept that role that's been given to me. And yes. through this process, I am being led, like, Lord, lead me to the right directions and what to do. So right. I have to overcome that. And sometimes I still have to come, overcome those things. But honestly, though, I will say this, since it's been happening to me, people in my circle or in our ministry and just other ministries, they have actually come up to me and they have encouraged me. Mm. Saying, hey, I like what you're doing. Keep up, keep up the good work because it is different. So I thought maybe yeah. I would be treated differently, but I'm treated more with grace and I'm just thankful for it. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's cool. That's good to hear too. Cause yeah, it's uh it's interesting. Also, too, you can see it come out in you in Denver, you mm -hmm. know. Um, just the way you talk. Um, you're very inspirational, you know, very positive. Um, you you do want to use your words. And, and your opportunities to help other people, um, you know, and I mean, you, you did a, I mean, you did a master class for like a dozen agents in, in Tupelo, like a small classroom right. to just to help some new agents. And I, I what, what'd you charge by the way? Like it was, it was $97. With nine, yeah, it was $97. <laughs> right. I mean, it was like, it wasn't yeah. about the money. No, you know? it wasn't. I mean, if it was, you wouldn't have spent your entire day for like a thousand bucks. Like, let's right. be honest. Like we start exactly. evaluating your time now as a business owner, right. you wouldn't have done it, but it was a way for you to give back, help some people. Um, it's also a way for you to give back to people that, that want to be a part of what you're doing and learn from you. Mm -hmm. What What did you learn from doing that um, class? As we have a ton of new agents that listen to this that aren't power players yet, but they believe that they will be, and we both believe they can be. Um, what did you learn from doing that? Man, it was so many different things I learned just from the class. Like, it's amazing to how new agents get in this business and they just have no idea of just yeah. like, okay, you're in the business. I'm here to make money. But what is what's your main purpose of being in the mm. business? You know, how can you identify yourself and what's the right product for you? How do you how do you make six figures? How do you track that? You know, so they were just so lost on everything. And I was like, I had no idea. I've been doing this for so long. I, I forgot the things that new agents deal with on a daily basis. Because we're taught get in business, make money and that's it. No one teaches you how to build a business to get started. No one tell you step by step what to do. But for me, though, it was if you could identify your purpose first. Yes. And get your mindset right. Understand your identity. Then you can be successful in becoming that's right. an insurance agent. And that's why I feel like most agent agents fail because they don't have a direction of where to go and how to get started. It's just about making money. And we all yes. can do that. <laughs> so. Yes, that's right. Uh, I also feel like this too, like you, you mentioned something really important and cool that I want to touch on that I don't talk about a lot, but it is, it is hard to like relate because you can become so disconnected after 16 years and growing right. this massive company with what people go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I always feel like too, it's actually harder. I really believe. And yeah, it's, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I believe it's harder when you have a bunch of time on your hands mm -hmm. when you don't know what to do. Cause when I have a bunch of free time, I just end up doing nothing. I just end up accomplishing nothing. Right. right? They, they always say that idle hands are the devil's workshop. Mm -hmm. If I don't have anything to do, 
I'm probably just not going to do a lot because I don't know what to do. It's almost like easier for me to take massive action when I'm massively busy. Right. And it's, it's so backwards from what you would think. You're right about that. Uh, if, if I got, well, I'm always got something to do. So it's like, I, I got to get it done. You know, let, let's go. Let's go. So you're right yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you notice that when you were talking to some of these agents, just that like from an activity standpoint, a lot of them just did not know what to physically do on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah. Because we we broke it down. What do these wow. figures look like? And we broke it down to $100,000 a year. Uh, to how much that is in total monthly, you know, sales to what's how many sales you need per day. And they even know mm -hmm. that type of activity of knowing how to track, how to track it. And so once we broke it down to, OK, if you're in live sales, for example, if your average average um, uh, monthly premium is 60 bucks, it's basically like three policies a week. They had no idea that's all that was. So now that you know what that is, you have a small goal to accomplish every week to get to your ultimate goal, which to make six figures or more. Not only that, we broke down, okay, you're going to have some retention. You know, people are going to drop off. So we talked about that 80-20. So we said, okay, so expect the 20% to drop off. So you got to sell more to still make the six figures, you know, and expenses. And we talked about all that. As a new agent, they don't know any of that information and, and how to track yeah. it and how to understand your business. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, what about it? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. Well, what about the investing piece? I mean, you, you, um, it's hard to invest in your business when you're new and you don't have any money. Right. Um, how, what, what should agents look at investing? Um, because I know you also invest a lot more in your business now than you ever did. You probably invest a lot more post COVID than you ever did pre COVID. Um, I would love for you to talk about both aspects as a business owner mm -hmm. that needs to invest more. They just don't realize it yet. <laughs> Um, but it's scary, It is. but also as a new agent, not having any money and not being there yet and then needing to invest in something. Right. So as a new agent, of course, when you have a little capital, you have to invest, invest in yourself. You are your investment. And so, like I said, in Denver, you have more time than money. So yeah. you have to invest yourself in time to go out to prospect, to find your clients so you can sell. Yeah. Once you get up enough income, then it's time to turn it around and invest into other things like leads or programs or coaching or whatever you need to continue to be su successful along the way. And so as new agents, they feel like I have to have leads right now, which you do. But if you don't have the leads, go out and be creative and create your own leads at little to no cost. And that's investing more time in yourself. So that's yeah. time first. Yes. Um, uh, now, on this other end, investing more money into programs and systems is very scary. But I look at it used to be an expense, Cody, but mm. I understand it's an investment. So, I mean, investment, you're going to get that back in return if you do what you're supposed to do. And as an insurance agent, my thing is once you invest and you learn, you implement it, you're going to make you're going to get that back 100 times fold. I, I truly believe that I see this a success from that now just for me investing in some things Um down the road. So yeah. it's, it's an investment for yourself. I mean, if you want to grow, you have to invest or you will be stagnant. You've been in the same place forever. And that's what I was at first. I wasn't really investing, just, you know, trying to make more money, trying to get more clients. And mm -hmm. I didn't see a return until I start truly investing in, in my business more. Wow. It's so scary though, initially. It's scary because we're scared we're going to, you know, scary we're going to fail, you know, yeah. but I think it's fail forward. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you experienced some failures, but to me, it's a first attempt in training. So you learn from that. So you get back up and you try again and you won't make that same mistake again. You know, yep. we will occur some losses down the road. But once you lose something, you're going to come back and say, OK, that didn't work. How can we get that back? You know, what's the yep. next strategy? And, and that's what you have to do. And we can always sell ourselves out of something. If you're mm -hmm. interested, you can always sell yourself out of something. That's right. That's yeah. right. It's also different different levels to this game of being a business owner with people. Um, I mean, you start having 14 people, mm -hmm. you end up dealing with a lot more personalities and problems and HR and conversations and feelings and emotions than you did at six people. You exactly. know, like it's a whole nother level. Talk about that real quick before I pivot to a couple other questions. Okay. <laughs> right? 
You're right. So when you used to have it yourself, you know, you deal with yourself. But when you hire new people coming into the office, they have different personalities. I um, mean, so you have to learn that personality. You have to learn what they like, what motivates mm-hmm. them. And also, too, you have to accept that they're not you. Everyone perceives different. Everyone learns differently. And so you have to have a trust factor that they're going to do it, which you tell them to do, but they're going to do it in their way, you know, because their one is different. And I've learned mm-hmm. earlier on that if you can accept everyone's personalities for where they are, you can get along with anybody, but they still have to fit your culture. They still have to fit your guidelines. They still have to, you know, everyone's a team player, so they can't, no one's no greater than the next person on a team. But you have to learn how to accept one another for where they are. So, Cody, if I know in the mornings is around eight o'clock, you know, you're not in your best mode. I'm going to wait till nine o'clock. Right. I'm not going to get you out straight up because eight o'clock is not your best time of the day. You know, if I know that this to certain things makes you upset, why do it? You know, so those things that I've learned how to deal with people. And that's good. Yeah, that's good. It also shows your heart, which is kind of what I was going to lead to next. I mean, you're one of my favorite people that, um, that we do stuff with, to be honest, like you really are just because of your heart, you're sincere, uh, person, you, you know, you're very genuine. Um, and you're someone that's just absolutely crushing it and probably way farther ahead than you even realize at the time. Right. Cause that's normal. Like we just think we're not doing enough or a lot, you know, like I want to help you get on a bunch of other stages too, cause you're already a really good speaker. Thank with you. the ability to be one of the top speakers in the industry, by the way, too. Like that's the goal, Cody. <laughs> that's right. Come on yeah. now, right? Yeah. Um, where's the heart come from? Like you have a really big heart. Um, I'm not saying you wear it on your sleeve, but you have a big heart for people. Right. Um, where's that come from? Is that from a parent or where you were raised, uh, uh, your family? Childhood. That's a great question. I think it just comes from my upbringing. You know, uh, very family oriented uh, person. Love my family, and mm-hmm. also too, just remembering where I come from. You know, I come from I come from nothing. You know, meaning that I was in poverty. So coming from mm-hmm. that, just remembering where I come from, and knowing that I always stay humble. In, in that area and realize that everyone is not where you are, but you can able to assist them to come. I'm a, I'm a leader. Once you come out of something, you have to go back and find the people who want to come out to and help them as well. Become givers to one another and God will continue yeah. to bless you as well. So I just yes. have a heart for people. It's just something I was born with, I guess. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's cool. It, it definitely shows. Um, also, too, we're we're starting to do a lot more together. Mm hmm. How's that experience been? I know it's been fun for me. It's been amazing. I, honestly, I will say I, I would have never expected this. It hasn't been 12 months yet. Uh, I think our first experience was with 8% was uh, last year in July, you know, yeah. and I made a commitment. My first investment was that, I mean, real investment into myself and moving forward now to where we are. I mean, speaking on stages, uh, agents coming to me, wanting my assistance and certain things. It helped make me realize what my true purpose is, you mm. know, is to be a helper and to be able to find another platform to make it do so. It ha- has helped me grow, helped me to believe in myself more. And I just can't really describe it. It's just, I'm just in awe. I'm just, I'm just in awe cool. um, about it. Yeah. And just to know what's to come down the road. I would say anybody if you don't know, you know, what's to come, just invest in yourself, trust the process and your and your purpose again will find you if you don't know what it is. You know, my thing is I want to be insurance sales, you know, I want to help people, but now I'm helping people yeah. more on another level. And it's still an insurance business, but I'm helping other people and agents, and you know, it's it's just amazing, amazing experience. Yeah. It's cool. Well, you're giving along the way, which helps a ton. I mean, you're also, what's cool is it's a way to attract a lot of people right, to the mission, to the calling, to the cause. How's that experience been of like, I know a lot of the old models are to go outbound Mm -hmm. and like beg people to work with you. You know, Um, it's a different approach to like do a bunch of stuff, get a bunch of attention, have some fun along the way, have a passion for it, give back. But also attract people inbound without having to chase everybody. Right. 
that has been an experience as well because you know honestly cody i how can i say it? i have turned people away really because wow. i i haven't i'm not quite i haven't been set up to maybe to house agents from different states to be successful mm. so i have to turn them away and say well let me just talk to you see can i give you some information to get started versus joining me on my team so that's been a different process okay Leticia, I know I want to grow my, my team. So get in position, get with the right team, the right FMO, right contracts, the right. right system to help people grow. So it's a, another learning experience, another learning curve for me that I'm still learning today. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've yes. always said I don't want a small team, but it's the way it's going. I'm going to have a pretty large team at some point. So that, that's right. This thing's yeah. going to get big. This thing's going to get bigger than either of us could realize, too. Yeah. Seriously. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for the direction that it's going in. So I love it. Well, yeah. it's been a blast for us to do more with you. It's been exciting. You're you're a lot of fun. People love you. Um, great personality. Thank you. If someone wants to learn more from you, reach out to you, mm -hmm. uh, follow you. Mm -hmm. Where would you like to send them? What 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 can they do? Okay. So. I'm going to put this out here. You know, I have the new pod, uh, my new podcast called Healthy Talks Podcast with my health care lady. And so they can also follow me on the Instagram. I'm going to make sure I give you the right, um, the right Instagram, Healthy Talks Podcast. Okay. Um, they can follow me there. And they can also email me too as well. Let's do that. That's and good. the email address I'm going to give out is going to be, uh, let's see which one. Let's do Leticia at jacksoninsurancegroup.com. Boom. And it's L E T I S H A. Yes. Leticia at jacksoninsurancegroup.com. Yes. Perfect. I love it. I love it. Well, awesome job again. Thank second, you. second time on the podcast. You yes. rock. And we'll see you in less than 60 days at yes. 8%. I'm live. excited. 2,000 crazy people. Yes, I'm excited. You. Listen, listen. If you want to change your life, if you, I'm not sure when it's going to air, but you should invest and come to 8%. Invest in yourself. And I promise you, it's going to blow your mind. It. Last year I went and today, I have a different story today. Wow. Thank yeah. you. That means a lot. Well, yeah. thank you for being on today. Thank you for always being so positive and thank you for everything that you do. Thank you, Cody. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to CA Power Plays podcast. Go follow Tisha. We'll see you on, <laughs> see you on the next one. Bye bye. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one. You're going to love it. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. So, we've had a lot of unlicensed agents finding us, following our stuff, or newly licensed, just joining the business. And you're thinking, like, dude, what is the life insurance career like? What's an insurance career like overall? Well, I want you to think about the vision.